the San Antonio Spurs, who made a midseason trade already, that happens like once every 25 years. So unheard of. Um, I don't know what to do with this team. Um, my gut is uh, so I stopped doing this, but they're 17 and 30. Their net rating is in the negative. They've got like 16 ish million under the tax line. Um, they so my my thought is one can you get a first for for thad young i don't i'm gonna dance around calling them a buyer or seller because i just don't know um thad young is like there i'm just saying now he's the most likely guy to be traded if he's not he's gonna get bought out um agree with you they feel like a they feel like a consolidation team to me and i feel like we only started talking about this because the hawks and then we just mentioned it a little bit with the grizzlies but um other than murray who's had quietly like a great year um so, I mean, not quietly if you're in San Antonio, but quietly for probably most people listening to this. Um, I think you hold on to him. I, no interest in trading him, but almost everybody else, probably in some order, like Devin Vassell, I'd probably hang on to. Uh, Primo's too young to know what to do with. But like, you've got a hand, like Keldon Johnson, Lonnie Walker, Derek White, Yaka Pertle's getting a lot of buzz as a super underrated, good center now. Um, but even him, I feel like none of those guys has star upside. Um, I know the Spurs don't typically like try to trade for that and there's not one available, but you could talk me into them basically being buyers, I guess, uh, in normal circumstances, if there were a star player available by packaging some of those guys and some picks. Um, Julius Randle. So, but I, I, I guess they seem like a spur to you. <laughs> you just try and get rid of them. <laughs> But like, yeah, so I don't know whether to call them buyers or sellers, but the the thing other than young, I think they just got a handful of guys that have some value that don't feel like cornerstones or even anything close to that to me that they could probably get some interest ginned up for. Yeah, I call them sellers just because I think young, you have to shop. They've already given up yeah. on Forbes. And I would also be looking at, Pirtle is interesting because I don't know what he is to you long-term, but he's so cheap next season. And the center market is always so wonky that if he's going to protect the rim this well for you, like maybe Zach Collins ends up panning out. Um, I don't think you are obligated to look at him. I know Doug McDermott does nothing for your timeline, but I think he's pretty important to your spacing. I'm looking at actually, I want to actively shop Derek White because you still have sort of this mm-hmm. log jam at like the, the one, two, three spots. And the Derek White Murray fit has never been super clean. They've played together a bunch this season. And he's Derek White's gotten better from when DeJounte Murray's dad was subtweeting how bad he was at the start of the season. But like I'm looking at because you've already paid both of those guys real money, not superstar money, but real money. I would look at moving one of them just so you're not like getting too expensive too quickly. And I don't think that they're like the perfect fits long term. And I think there's probably a team out there. And I, if I was in land, I'd be looking at this like they'll give you picks plural for a Derek White. And I think that San Antonio is stuck in this weird middle ground not you know you trust them more than the kings but they're not bad enough to really get the top pick that's going to yield them a superstar that can be the you know the just the direction of the rebuild but they also don't have the player on their already ross on their roster already who could serve as that player Dejounte murray comes closest but i don't know if he's actually that player and i don't it's it's too early Devin Vassell has more ball skills he shot pretty well on pull-up middies this year, but it's not him. Josh Primo is way too young to say anything about. So, yeah, we, we know they found Kawhi Leonard later in the draft. They traded for him, yada, yada, yada. But I'm I'm divesting right now if I'm them, especially because, like, they're still just between – if you want to call them swingmen instead of, like, saying that all of them are wings, but just, like, between Lonnie Walker hitting restricted free agency. You really shouldn't pay him. He's all over the place. Lonnie team will take, the, take a chance on him. But you have him, you have Primo, you have Murray, you have White. And then Vassell is in that category. Johnson's probably firmly like not. But just like between all those guys, there's weird like positional overlap to where you can't necessarily play all of them at the same time unless you're going to downsize to an incredible degree. And yeah, you know what? If someone wants Doug McDermott, because we talked about teams that might be in the market for shooting, I'm absolutely yeah. listening. So I'm on listen mode for pretty much everybody with this team. And I think that they should actively just be looking at, hey, what does Derek White fetch us in addition to just by virtue of having Thaddeus Young? I think you call them sellers. <laughs> I think too, uh, with White, I didn't really think about him as a, you know, someone who's on the market, but like we were talking about earlier, 
Like if you're in the market, if you, if you're seeking an Eric Gordon type and they're just, there's just Eric Gordon and nobody else like white, white's a different player, but he sort of ticks that box a little bit, you know, more so than Terrence Ross, who I mentioned already is just like a, you know, a one dimensional guy. Um, I think, I don't know what you'd get for white. I surely you'd get a first for white, right? Like of some kind, I would think he's would, 27. Like it's not, he's old for the Spurs core, but he's not old capital O. I would think. Yeah. I mean, it depends on, I guess, like the pick cachet for each team that would be involved, but you're getting at least one first rounder for him. I don't know if one first is enough for me to move him. I probably want a young player and a first or the equivalent of, of two first. Uh, maybe is it like what, what about Phoenix? Phoenix would be interesting, but so you're getting a 2024 first and salary filler. And I think you could get Sarge. Sarge seems like a spur. Like he could, I could see them actually wanting him next year if assuming he gets healthy. I don't know. And give him Jalen Smith too. Why not take a flyer? That would be a man. If I'm the Suns, I'm I'm kicking those tires for sure. But I, but but there's Derek White's probably not available. So I thought more along the lines of something like a tight package of if if Toronto came calling with you have Dragic's expiring contract, but what if it's a first round pick and you get Malachi Flynn or Delano Banton even. So you're not getting OG or Scotty Barnes, but like the lower end prospect, a protected pick, or even Boston would be a team. I don't know if they're interested in Derek, right? They could definitely use another ball handler who could create, but I don't think he's floor general enough, but it would be like, oh, you can have Pritchard, Neesmith, or Langford, and then we'll give you a first in addition to the salary to get here. Is that type of a package enough for San Antonio to move white? I don't know, but I think that's the type of return that realistically or at minimum you'd be looking at where well, you're not getting yeah, the yeah. premier anything, but you could get two of, of something worth uh, further evaluation. Yeah. But he's not likely to get, I mean, young is getting traded. If we're, if we're picking one, I mean, white would command a lot more, but I, I don't know. They don't still, know the Spurs still make out like bandits from the DeMar DeRozan. I know he's playing well this season, but he wasn't helping the Spurs get to the level Chicago is in the East. So they, they still made out really well with that, but mm -hmm. not capitalize on young would be, like that would be borderline franchise malpractice here. It's it blows my mind that you see sometimes that he's expected to get bought out, and I just like I don't. Is that, that just because the Spurs? When you're basically behind Jock Landale in the rotation, though, like that's. Well, that's but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, his per thirty six numbers, Youngs are are close enough to they just what he did with him. the Bulls. Yeah, yeah, they just he's not playing. It's not. I mean, he's the same guy essentially. Unless yeah, so I don't. I don't if he's bought out. What a shock that would be. I, he, he's got to get traded. The Spurs have to get something for him. Yeah, he, he would be the most likely player to get traded, and he should get traded.